it is a day of video making here in the pro monkey house i'm doing one now about a power thing and then also decide you know what we need to talk about daytona because it has some opportunities to improve still so if you're new to the channel welcome if you're coming back love you to death thanks for hanging out trying to still be the same jerk i've been all the time on here so let me know your thoughts comment down below if you think things have changed the things you like to see topics like to cover all that sort of stuff make sure you're subscribed that's all we ask for um just got back from daytona recently and yes yes the chopper we built on the channel it won an award i know okay it is now the award-winning brown sugar i expect the Dis discovery channel to call for the show offer any day now because i'm now an award-winning bike builder because I did one Sportster that won Working Man's class. Ego is just blowing up. Anyway, so Daytona. I've said before in videos, and you've seen me say, that Sturgis is better. That Leesburg is better. Still feel the same way. I like Daytona more now than I used to. But that's really just because I have a lot of friends that go and a lot of stuff I like to see. And so I enjoy Daytona more than when I first started going because I like to see my pals. And I like to go to bike shows, and it is a good party right so daytona is better to me than it used to be but it still kind of sucks in some ways that i think can improve and it's really well some things yeah anyway let's just go through them this is no i didn't write a list i didn't think about this i don't think about much i thought we'd just sort of throw out some stuff that i think for me are some real opportunities to improve the daytona rally first off this is nothing you can do about this this is something to recognize daytona is a big city i mean it doesn't have any towering skyscrapers like miami or anything but it's a big city so it's it doesn't stop for the rally i i feel like it's kind of the only rally they just throw in a major metropolitan area sturgis is a small town right and 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 the the locals there know to pack it in stay off the streets maybe they they rent their houses out and they go on vacation whatever and they let us take over the entire sturgis 200 mile square mile area and it's all about the rally and they're super supportive of the rally a lot of money goes in the area from the rally they love us sturgis locals love us they're, it's not really a problem uh sturgis police are fantastic local government's fantastic all that sort of stuff daytona is a pretty big town still and i kind of feel like they don't want us the locals don't so there's this like i don't i, I have my hand holding the camera so i can it's supposed to be punching anyway um it it, it there's an issue there that like the town doesn't necessarily want us there and if you see bob and tam and some other channels they have specific knowledge of businesses buying up main street businesses and they're going to try and stop main street all that sort of stuff which i kind of understand because i hate main street we didn't even go this time like we stayed off main street because traffic and dudes banging the rev limiter on their z9 fiber x 600s it's it's a it's awful that and tricycles backwards tricycles called slingshots those should be outlawed um with speakers sticking out everywhere and fur and lights just playing awful super mario music going down it's i hate it i hate main street so we didn't even go this time but anyway so there's there's a there's a problem there with the locals not wanting us like they do at other rallies leesburg leesburg's best rally in florida they want us there it's a small town even though it's not massive, massive, the locals tend to kind of stay out of the way and, and let us do our thing. They support us spending our money. They, you know, it's a really, really good local rally. Leesburg's a blast. So if you're a Floridian or even South Georgia and Alabama and South Carolina, whatever, like it's Louisiana, it's worth coming down to Leesburg. It's a good Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday rally. It's a really good time. Anyway, next major topic, traffic. Now, I don't know what can be done about this because I am not smart period much less one to tell you how to manage the flow of a half a million people i don't know how many people go to daytona but it's a lot and getting in and out of destination daytona your clutch hand like you better work that sucker out for a while before you go because you're just going to be sitting there especially if you're on an old chopper um you're just going to be sitting there forever waiting to get in and get a space and get parked like it's 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 a thing waiting to get a destination daytona main street again we avoid it now but i'm sure that sucks too um sometimes traffic getting into cackleberry cabbage patch is really really bad but that brings us to the final topic the thing that i could talk about for hours 
that can be improved upon and that will just take the locals the local business owners everyone to get on social media and talk about this it's it's a problem and i'm probably gonna be persona non grata after i say it but i don't think ahead so we're just gonna say it law enforcement is a problem in daytona it's a problem in daytona not like Sturgis, not like Leesburg, not like any other motorcycle rally I've ever been to. Daytona law enforcement is a problem during the rally. They're not helping. Oh, but whatever do you mean, oh, overweight, bald dude with, no, with a beard, looking like every other guy that goes to a rally. It's simple. They're not there to help. It feels like systemic harassment. Okay? So... And I'm not talking about necessarily, well, actually, no, I didn't go to Main Street, but I heard some stories where they're just walking down the street checking VIN numbers, and they're walking down the street checking plates, and they're photographing people, and they're, and not, I'm not talking about screwing with a guy banging the rev limiter on Main Street or the guy with the super loud stereo or whatever. Like, they're going down inspecting bikes, screwing with people, just screwing with people. There's no other way to do it. Like, if you go to Sturgis, I'm going to use Sturgis as an example here. Sturgis police are the best they have got this shit figured out they really do i don't know if it's the chief or local bit the local the mayor the city count i don't know who it is that makes sure that they have a perfect balance of just keeping everyone safe versus making sure things don't get out of control etc etc because sturgis police they're just there to make sure you don't die i, I seriously i feel like that's what they're there for i i typically <laughs> avoid talking to law enforcement whenever possible because it rarely goes well. Um, but I've talked to them. I talked to Sturgis PD. Walking down the street, you see them standing there. You go, how's it going? How are things? People being all right? And they will talk to you. Yeah, man, it's been really good this year. Or no, nah, it's been a bad year, man. We've had we've people lost their lives. And every one of them I've talked to has been really cool during the Sturgis rally. Every single one of them has been like, it's been a bad year. I remember one guy saying one year, say, it's been sad, man. We've seen a lot of guys lose their lives because... He actually said, he goes, you could tell these are dudes that used to ride but hadn't ridden a long time and the kids have grown up and they've made some money and so they go buy themselves a brand new Ultra Classic and they come up here and they're not ready for Iron Mountain Road and they shoot off and hit a tree and it's just freaking terrible. Like, yeah, you, know, like, you can see this guy empathizing with families that have lost, like, a good dude standing there wearing a Sturgis PD shirt and all he's doing is looking for somebody who's stumbling around and probably shouldn't be getting on a bike. And also, I feel like Sturgis PD gives you every opportunity to not do the stupid thing i don't feel like they're walking around going i want to lock that guy up i want to lock that guy up i feel like they're walking around going hey how do i keep this guy from going to the clink like i've seen him i have seen the conversation where they'll say to a guy hey why don't you pour that beer out and go sit down for a little bit like why don't you just like why don't you chill i don't want to have to talk to you later and i don't want to have to put wrist you know wristbands on you later either like go sit down chill out well you know like your bike will be here like <laughs> Now, yes, they're going to pull it if it's there at 2 in the morning, but I feel like their job really is to stop you from dying and keep you out of jail. I, I, I've seen the conversations, and if you ever watched the Sturgis PD special where like it was like cops but only in Sturgis, I haven't laughed so hard in my life is when they found these guys, big old muscle head, roid head dudes who started a fight at uh, One-Eyed Jacks and got their asses kicked. <laughs> and they're sitting on the curb just bloody crying that guy beat me up and he was mean and the and the cops like so what guy and turns out these muscle heads went into one eye jack started a fight got the ever living shit beat out of them and then went outside and called the police the police came found out they had started the fight and the cops were like interviewing them then they walk around the corner and laugh hysterically <laughs> these cops were rolling going he's crying like, like you know anyway i feel like they're there just to keep those problems from happening back to Daytona and I'll tell you a little story a specific story that happened this year the prime example of where shit's got to stop man if you're in the Daytona PD we see it it's got to stop if you're a local business owner if you're you know Ron who owns Cackleberry who's a good dude I would imagine you have some influence you own a large business there this is a problem and it has to stop all right so I can't remember if it was I think it was Thursday night yes my buddy Matt had driven up just for the day to hang out. We're having a good old time. 
Uh, not, not drinking and riding, nothing like that. Just going from like show to show and place to place. And we're heading back to Cackleberry to begin the evening. And I'm on my chopper. And my chopper has developed a fuel leak. The float was stuck and the, you know, the overflow was, anyway. So I'm sitting there at idle having to turn the petcock off to stop gasoline from flowing out of the side of my motorcycle when I'm stopped. So Matt's on my right. I'm in the left track, he's in the right track. And we're about, I don't know, 30 cars from the entrance to the Cackleberry because it's like a walk, you know, walking pace. Matt wears goggles because we we're getting, we were getting on I-95 for a while, which by the way is fun on a first gen Evo Sportster chopper going 75 mile an hour on I-95. Um, and he's kind of monitoring the situation. I'm looking down, but he's checking over. And he, and he just literally grabs his goggles and flips them up to his forehead so he can look under my air cleaner to kind of assess the situation, see if I'm leaking right now. Just takes his goggles and puts them up here. We are, we are sitting in heavy traffic, meaning that we are never gonna go faster than like walking pace on the bikes. So his goggles are on his forehead right now. You have to understand this, I'm sitting in heavy traffic. We are never going to accelerate faster than six miles an hour from this point until our destination. Joe Cowboy Hat, Billy Bob Walker, Texas Ranger, walks up and goes, eh, eh, and points to Matt to pull off. And I'm like, oh, what is this happy bullshit, right? Like, so I am experienced and <laughs> know that I'm not gonna bail on my buddy because he doesn't know exactly where my rig is in the, in the campground, but I ain't stopping right there. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop right in front of El Popo. So I go quite a bit a ways, probably 10, 12 car lengths up, and then I pull off on the shoulder and I sit there watching Matt in my mirror. And I don't know what's going on back there. Matt tells me later that this guy, literally 10 gallon cowboy hat, like literally this guy thinks he's Walker, Texas Ranger in Florida. Um, when he pulls his ID out, he says to Matt, what's that, uh, why do you have two driver's licenses? And Matt goes, it's my military ID. And he's like, let me see that. So he like takes his military ID with, you know, anyway. So we're sitting there and I don't even see, I only have the one mirror on the left side and I'm just sitting there like, you know, and all of a sudden I hear, howdy, like right here. I'm like, Jesus, you know, Walker, Texas Ranger, he walked all the way up, Starsky and Hutch, you know, he walked all the way up from way back there just to screw with me. I didn't even get pulled over. Just to screw with me, Captain Cowboy Hat walks all the way up and says, Howdy, do you have a headlight? And I'm like, it's the big shiny circle in the front of the mo I mean, like, I, I didn't say that because that goes bad. But I'm like, it's, yeah, like, dumbass, it's right there. Is it on? I'm like, well, the bike's turned off, I'm parked. These are all like, first off, this is not legal. What's happening right now is not legal. I'm sitting on the shoulder, my motorcycle turned off. Asking to verify my headlight is on is stupid. The bike's turned off. So why would you ask if my headlight is on? And I said, my headlight works. And then he says, do you have a front brake? He's standing, like the lever's right there. And I'm like, I just go out and I just point, yeah, there, there it is. All right, you have a good day and walks away. What just happened was completely illegal. I'm sitting still on the shoulder, I'm not riding and he decides to come up and do an impromptu inspection of my bike on the side of the road which I had the stuff he was worried about. It's a good thing he didn't ask about turn signals or a horn. I don't have those. And the little slip thing they gave Matt shows you have to have those. Don't have them. Anyway, so Walker, Texas Ranger, he, he goes back to, the, to Matt and then Matt pulls up behind me and we go in. And we talked about this for about 30 minutes because Matt's like, dude, I was in traffic. I wasn't going anywhere. I could not have gone fast enough to, he's like, I put it this way, I was going so slow I hadn't noticed my goggles weren't on my eyes. Like, I'm just sitting still. And to pop somebody about popping their goggles up in walking traffic, and then going up and screwing with somebody who you did not pull over, who's just sitting there, that's, that's a, this is a problem. It's a serious problem and it needs to be handled. So, I challenge all the Daytona business owners and all of us that go to Daytona to, to start talking about this. Like, hey, it's not okay. It's not okay to screw with people. Your job is to keep us alive, is to stop accidents, this, that, and the other. Your job is not to screw with people, and that's all they're doing. So 
Uh, and, and just to set the stage again, now these, this is like three or four officers that sit on the side of the road on Tomoka Farms Road right before you get to the entrance of Cackleberry, okay? And, and they just sit there and they just look at everyone as they go by because you can't go faster than walking pace. And they just go, you, 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 and they're checking for front brake and they're checking for headlight and they're checking for whatever. And evidently, if you put your sunglasses up your head, they pull you over for that. And then three more of them sit at the entrance of Cackleberry. And look, I get it, but what I would hope is that officers are sitting there looking for somebody who's too wobbly on their bike. Maybe they had too much to drink. You don't want them to get hurt. You don't want them to get killed, this, that, and the other. Don't screw with people. It's not cool. Anyway, so let me know what you think. I just maybe pissed off a whole lot of people that are like, the police should be able to screw with whoever they want. No, they shouldn't. Okay? Comment down below what you think. Say what you think. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe, all that. Unsubscribe if I just pissed you off. Whatever. So, love you all to death. Take care of each other, other. We'll talk real soon. Bye.